to my very first TFT educational video. I did a few on Dota Underlords in the past few past few weeks, and uh, now that TFT is out, I'm gonna do a few of these on TFT, and maybe we'll go back to Dota Underlords later on after the new patch. Um, this week's video is gonna be on item builds and what items you should put on different pieces, on different uh, units. And uh, basically it's just to help out people that don't really understand what items are best for different units. Uh, so we're gonna get started with uh, one cost units and then we're gonna go up to five cost units. A lot of these builds are gonna be very similar so I will be rushing through some of them, um, but uh, we'll start off slow at the beginning and we'll move through them a little bit quicker while we go through them. And then at the bottom of every list, if you can see here on Garen, there's a spatula item. Basically, I just made a spatula item for each unit based on what their um, origins or their classes are. So uh, obviously you can do a bunch of more things, but because of what Garen's origin or class is, I chose to make him a Blade Master. So we're gonna start off with Garen and we'll just start off right now. So Garen is a tank bruiser. I will call him a tank bruiser because uh, he does damage while also sitting in the front line taking damage. He's good with Phantom Dancer. Phantom Dancer is probably gonna be on a lot of units throughout this whole thing because Phantom Dancer is one of the best items in the game, I would say. Uh, so if you can build it, just build it because it's great. And then uh, next up is Morello Namicon. Uh, Morello is really good on Garen just because when he spins, it actually dishes out the uh, burning damage. And it makes it so that uh, he's he, while he's spinning, he's also magic. He's also immune to magic, right? So he's like, he's just doing a ton of damage while not taking too much damage on him. And uh, the burn added to his spin is really, really strong. Uh, next up is Red Buff. Red Buff is just made from two really tanky items. So uh, Giant Spells and uh, Chain Vest. Those two items are just the best tank items, obviously. Uh, so combine them into one item and put, take an item slot with that. It's actually really good. And red buff is a pretty good item. It burns and it stops healing. So it's a really good item to have on somebody. Next up we have Frozen Heart. Frozen Heart is really good on a tank. It's made from Chain Vest and a tier. Tier um, gives you mana and then Chain Vest is gonna be armor. So it's uh, two pretty decent things on Garen because you want him to spin as fast as possible. And then the perk of Frozen Heart is gonna allow you to decrease the attack speed of everybody surrounding him, of the opponents surrounding him. So uh, it's just a really good item to have on your tanks because uh, it'll keep his survival survivability up while also allowing him to uh, dish out a lot of damage. Next up we have Warmogs. Warmogs is made from two giant spells. Not my favorite item. I don't think health is a very important part of uh, this game, but it is pretty good early and mid game, but late game health is not as good as armor, I would say. And then armor is not quite as good as magic resist. So Warmox is a decent item. It gives you HP regen as well as having those two items on it, which makes it an okay item if you can make it and you don't have any other item to make. And then Blade of the Ruined King is there just to make him a sword master uh, just because Fiora is a sword master and they're both nobles, so they fit into the same uh, same synergy. Next we have Vayne. Vayne is a ranged DPS, so you're going to want very damaging items on her. Um, basically, if you want to make her a hyper carry, you'd want very uh, the high end items. And I mean, even if she's just a regular carry, then you know you're just going to put the damaging items on her anyways. So. The items you want to put on her are things like Bloodthirster, which is made from a BF sword. Um, Bloodthirster will also keep her alive longer because it has lifesteal. Then anything with Recurve Bow. I feel Recurve Bow is actually the best single item in the game. Uh, it just makes so many things. It makes so many good things. Like next up we have Titanic Hydra. That is a, an amazing item and it's made from a Titanic Hydra and a, and a Giant's Belt. And basically what it does is it allows uh, Vayne or anybody that that is using it to do splash damage to the opponent, uh, to the target's rear. So whoever you're hitting and the person behind them. So it's actually pretty good. Uh, then you have Rapid Fire Cannon, which is made from two rapid, uh, made from two recurve bows. And Rapid Fire Cannon allows you to uh, double your attack range. So 
with people like Vayne or any of those ranged DPSs, you're actually getting more, you're getting more range, which means that they can stay further back in the back line while the opponents are all up fighting your tanks and stuff like that. So she doesn't need to move around and she can actually do a lot more damage um, from being back there while having all that extra attack speed. And she's also, uh, and you can't dodge her attacks. So uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> Next up you have Ginsu's Rage Blade. Ginsu's Rage Blade is made from a recurve bow and a rod. And it's a pretty good item. Rod isn't necessarily gonna help Vayne, but Ginsu itself is a pretty good item because of the stacking attack speed and it stacks indefinitely. So with Bane sitting in the back line and her ulti being her passive ability to do more damage after every three hits to proc that uh, whatever the circle that she does. So having Ginsu's Rage Blade on her is actually really, really strong. And stacking two Ginsu's on her is pretty strong as well. And then, of course, Phantom Dancer, just good on any unit. It's going to give her some attack speed and also make her a little tanky while also being able to dodge those critical strikes, which... Uh, assassins have most a lot of assassins will um have so you're gonna be they're not gonna be able to insta kill Vayne if she has that on her and then i also said to make her a blade master because fiora is also a blade master like i said with garen it's the same reasoning they're both nobles next up we have fiora uh fiora is a melee dps so items are fairly the same same reasonings behind mostly all of them I added Infinity Edge uh, to her item pool just because I didn't feel Rapid Fire Cannon is a very good item for her. Uh, so Infinity Edge is just two BF storage, which is a lot of damage, and then you get that extra 100% crit damage, so it's pretty good. Uh, Gintu's again, still pretty good on her, um, and Phantom Dancer, and then you can make her a knight because there's a bunch of knights and nobles, and she's already a blade master, so there's a bunch of knights, there's Garen, and there's Kale, so uh, not a bunch, but two knights, so she can make the, she can become a knight. And uh, actually, K Fiora is actually probably the worst unit in the game, according to me, so I wouldn't put any items on her, but if you have to, you can go ahead and put any of these items on her, but mostly she's trash, so you don't need to really do anything like that. Next up we have Graves. Graves is a melee DPS. Uh, so with Graves, you're going to want to put anything that from the last two, <laughs> the last two DPS units. Uh, so uh, Bloodthirst is really good on him. Titanic Hydra is also explicitly good on him, especially good on him because he's a, he's, you think he's a range because he has a gun, but he only shoots one space away. Um, but he has a code, he shoots in a code because of his ulti. So he hits multiple units, so he gets extra, and those apply on hit effects. So you're actually getting like Titanic Hydra stacked, and then you're getting Red Buff, which is the next item, stacked. And then, so it's just a really good, uh, those those items that do on hit effects are pretty good with Graves. And then we have Ginsu's Rage Blade again, which is still good on him. And then Phantom Dancer is also good on him. And then you can also make him a Blade Master, um, just because uh, Gangplank is a Blade Master and they're both pirates and they're both gunslingers actually so they're both pirates and they're both gunslingers so they kind of pretty good together next up we have tristana tristana is a ranged dps so she is going to be about the same as everybody else from before um i went and went and put static shiv in there just because uh, tristana's range is really really good already i think it's four spaces if you want to increase it, you can go and give her a rapid fire cannon. And if you want, if there's a, like a bunch of gordles or something and you need to make it so that they can't dodge your attacks, um, rapid fire cannon is good as well. But I put static shiv on there. It's a pretty good item. I like how it, uh, I like the splash damage effect on it. Um, but it's, uh, it's not necessary. But her ultimate is actually pretty uh, splashy too because she, bops a bomb on, she puts a bomb on somebody and then uh, slowly procs it and then once it explodes it does splash damage so adding stavish, static shift to that will add a little bit more damage to her ulti in a way. So you're going to be getting a uh, Bloodthirster, Titanic Hydra, Static Shift, Ginsu's Rage Blade is the same thing like everybody else, Phantom Dancer the same thing and then uh, you can make her a Blade Master and that's because Gangplank is also a Blade Master. Kha'Zix, Kha'Zix you can make, uh, Kha'Zix is a melee DPS um, 
so he's going to be fairly similar but i gave him a little bit different items just because he's a an assassin and you want him to uh ulti and eliminate the back line as fast as possible bloodthirster is still okay on him just because it's a strong item to keep him alive um, but usually you're going to want to go and just have him annihilate anybody in the back line as fast as possible so i like curse blade curse blade will reduce units star uh like level in the, so if he's fighting anybody in the back line he's going to reduce their level especially in the next patch uh, that comes out this week uh he's going to be reducing their their stars and he's going to make them weaker and it just makes it easier to kill them and also makes it so that they're not doing much to your team as well and then shojin is really good on him because you want his ulti to go off faster so you're going to have a tier on him you're going to get that extra mana then you're going to ulti and then he's going to get mana faster because of shojin afterwards sword of the divine i feel it's a very cliche item uh it's very low chance of actually doing anything since it's like five percent every second um to get 100 percent critical strike chance if it happens and god wills it then yeah it's a great item but you, it's a five percent chance it's not that great but if you have those two items if you have recurve bow and a bo sword and you can't make anything else it's not a bad item to have it on a on an assassin because they're already doing a bunch of critical strike damage phantom dancer always good um it's the counter to assassins but it's also great on assassins and then you can make him a demon because uh evelyn's a demon and she's an assassin so next up we have warwick warwick is a tank bruiser he's going to be a little bit different than garen who i also said was a tank bruiser uh warwick is going uh, i would say warwick because he's a wild you want to give him things like zeke zeke's uh zeke's is pretty good because it gives attack speed to everybody around them and wild also if you have four wild it gives attack speed to everybody on your team so it's pretty nice little like just more attack speed like stacking attack speed on the attack speed it's kind of cool uh, kind of a fun little build to go for and then warmox is pretty good on him just to keep him alive especially when he's like ulting somebody and then they're like he's just uh, not doing much um just keeping him alive is pretty good so warmox is pretty good on him frozen heart is pretty good on him Thornmail is pretty good on him because he will be usually inside of a team after he ulties. So being inside of that team, uh, that enemy's area and having a bunch of people attacking him, uh, that he's going to be dishing some damage back while not even actually targeting them. And then Phantom Dancer is pretty good just because for survivability sakes. And then you can make him a Glacial because, uh, because Volley Bear is also a Glacial and he's a Brawler and Volley Bear is a Brawler. Next up, we have Cassidin. Cassidin is also a tank bruiser. He is also, he's a sorcerer, but he's mostly a tank bruiser. So you would want to build things like Dragon's Claw because he's going to be in the front line. Every time he does an attack, he gets a shield and uh, the shield will block damage, but he's in the front line and he's, he's the counter to mages kind of he's the counter to anybody who has an ability that's crucial to a team because he removes mana every hit so keeping him alive uh in the front line uh with the dragon's claw is really good for him and then having uh things like ginsu's rage blade um will give him a little bit more attack speed so that he can uh clear out the front line a little bit faster give him frozen heart so that he's as like every other tank bruiser just to slow down attack speed in the front um, so he doesn't die as fast and your your team doesn't die as fast and then Zephyr's is pretty good on him I like Zephyr because it also gives him magic resist which I feel he's is an essential part of Cassidy uh, just giving him magic resist makes him a little bit stronger and then Giant's Belt is pretty good just to give him some a little bit more health a little bit more uh, stability so Zephyr as an item itself is not my favorite, but it removes the unit from the board and if you place it right It can remove a specific unit from the board. So Cassidy is a unit that Can make use of it. Um, any of the tank bridges can make use of it But I feel Cassidy is pretty good with it as well And then you have Phantom Dancer over there, which is just good on everybody and then 
You can also make him an assassin with Yomus because um, Kha'Zix is an assassin and they're both boys. Nidalee. So Nidalee is a DPS unit because when she's not transformed, she's doing range damage. And when she's transformed, she's doing uh, melee damage. Her items are very similar to uh, Warwick's uh, and uh, the other DPS units. Basically, uh, Bloodthirster is pretty good on her. Um, I would also say Rapid Fire Cannon is pretty good on her because she like gains the space when she's in Tiger form, and then uh, it just she stays in the back line, and then she can just kind of do extra damage to everybody. But uh, not exactly my first pick on a, of an item on her. And Titanic Hydra is pretty good on her. Um, Zeke's is pretty good on her because she's a wild, and then Static Shiv is nice on her. Uh, and then Phantom Dancer is also pretty good on her. I mean, Phantom Dancer, like I said, is just going to be on almost everybody. And then Yomu's. Uh, you can make a Yomu's on her, make her an assassin, uh, just because Rengar is an assassin and they're both wild. Next up, we have Mordekaiser. Uh, I don't know why I put tank. He should be a tank bruiser. Uh, items are going to be very similar to every other tank bruiser, kind of. Uh, so Zephyr, Warmogs. Thornmail, Frozen Heart, Phantom Dancer, all good items on him. And then you can make him a sorcerer because uh, Karthus is also a sorcerer. That's pretty much all it is for Mordekaiser. You're not going to probably build items on Mordekaiser unless he's your only tank. Then maybe you'll build a few tank items on him. Elise. Elise is a DPS unit. She's just like Nidalee. She transforms. She's melee. When she's not, she's ranged. Same items almost. Uh, I put a Hextech Gunblade just because she does lifesteal uh, when she's in her ulti. Um, so she just giving giving her more lifesteal options because Bloodthirst is a lifesteal option. Hextech Gunblade is basically a lifesteal option. So you're going to get just more life back. And then uh, I put Zeke's on her. Not because she's a wild, but just because I feel she's probably going to be centered on your team somewhere. She's not going to be really in the front, but she's going to be like in the center. So she's going to be in a good position for Zeke's. And then Phantom Dancer is just good on her as well. And then you can make a, her a Blade Master just because Aatrox is a Blade Master and she's also a demon. And he's a demon. Next up is Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is also a tank bruiser. He's going to get the same items. So Zephyr, Warmog, Stormmail, Frozen Heart, Phantom Dancer, etc, etc. And you can make him a Yomus because... Uh, Kha'Zix is an assassin, so he can become an assassin as well. Most likely, you won't be putting items on Rek'Sai particularly, because if you're building Rek'Sai, you're going to be building Cho'Gath, and you're going to probably put those items on Cho'Gath instead. Okay, so we have Braum here. Braum is a tank. He is not a tank bruiser because he really doesn't do any damage, but he is there just dishing, uh, taking in all the hits. So. You're going to build the same things as most of the tank bruisers, but probably not any of the damaging items. So you're going to just stick to things like Thornmail because he has very strong staying power. Warmogs, Zephyr is pretty good on him. If you need the magic resist, Zephyr is pretty good on him. And then Frozen Heart's pretty good on him. And then Phantom Dancer, of course. And then you can make him a knight because Sejuani is a knight and they're both glacials. Next up, we have Shen. He is a tank bruiser. So with Shen, I would say that you want to go things like uh, Dragon's Claw. Dragon's Claw is really good on Shen, especially if you don't want him to die too quickly. You want him to be able to do his ulti so people can, his team can evade damage. Warmogs is pretty good on him. Uh, Thornmail. Warmogs, Thornmail um, are pretty good on just anybody. If you're fighting a lot of teams that have a lot of physical damage. Those are probably the items you want to go for along with Frozen Heart and Phantom Dancer. Dragon's Claw, you only want to build that if the other team is, if like there's a few teams or the team that's winning or the last team you're going to be fighting against is heavy on magic damage. Yomu's, Yomu's on Shen is pretty good because there's two assassin ninjas already, Akali and Zed. So if you're going to be build, building ninjas or ninja assassins, you can add a third ninja just by dropping that item on on Shen. So Zed is up next. He's a melee DPS. So you're going to use the same items as most DPS units, uh, but he's also an assassin. So we're going to stick with things like uh, Bloodthirster, but we're also going to put Shojin on him to get his ulti faster, um, take out the backline. 
uh, Infinity Edge, so higher crits. Divine, uh, Sword of the Divine, like I said, with Kha'Zix is a very niche item, but if you can make it and that's the only item you can make, then it's not too bad. Phantom Dancer, of course, and then Blade Master because uh, Shen is a Blade Master and you can make him also a Blade Master. Lissandra, Lissandra is a mage, so I'm going to classify most, uh, not just sorcerers, but anybody kind of like a sorcerer as a mage. Uh, so we will move on from here. Uh, so Lissandra is a mage, you're go but she's more of like a tanky mage. She's going to be in the front kind of, and I feel that she's going to, you're going to put things uh, that kind of are supportive to your team because she's, she either ulties an opponent or she ulties herself and does damage around her. So keeping her kind of centered, not exactly in the front, but kind of centered is pretty good. So Zephyrs is pretty good on her, especially if the other team has magic damage or if there's a unit you need to take out from the board. And then Locket is really good on her because she'll probably be centered and you'll give armor or shield to everybody around her. Seraphs is pretty good because you want her to ulti um, as fast as possible. Uh, usually you want her ulti an enemy unit. It removes an enemy unit from the board for a little bit if they're not going to die from it. Or it helps if, if she puts it on herself, she also saves herself. So it's pretty good too. And then Morello's is pretty good because her ulti, once she ultis around that unit, whoever's been ultied, takes damage. Um, so Morello's will actually proc off on those units too, around that unit. So it's kind of like an AoE effect. And then for any mage, Rabadon Sith Cap is a mainstay, so it's a good item just to put on any mage. And then you can make her a sorcerer because she's not a sorcerer, and you're probably going to put her in a sorcerer team. So uh, let me say one more thing about Lissandra. So I chose to make her a sorcerer over like something like a demon, um, even though there's two more demon elementals, just because uh, making her a sorcerer will make her much stronger. And it happens a lot. So I feel that making her a sorcerer is not too bad. Ari. Ari is a mage. And you're going to want to put things like Luden's Echo. Luden's Echo is really good on her because she hits multiple units with her ulti and she throws it in a line. So throws it in a line, does splash damage, splash damage, splash damage. Just does a lot of damage. Hextech Gunblade is pretty good on her because Hextech Gunblade, not just from auto attacks, but from spells, also gets health back. So she'll be able to get some health back from doing your ulti. Seraphs is pretty good on her because you want her to ulti as, quick as quickly as possible as well because her ulti is really strong, especially against multiple units. If it's later in the fight where there's not that many units left, it's not that good. So you want her to ulti as fast as possible. So giving her two tiers, giving her Seraphs is really good. Morellas is also good on her because it's hitting multiple units. You're going to be burning multiple units, which is always uh, the the ideal situation for when you're using Morellos. And then Rabadon's the mainstay, and then you can make her a demon because Morgana is a demon and they're both sorcerers. Next up we have Varus. Varus is a ranged DPS as well. So things like uh, anything like Vayne's items, Ginsu Rageblade, Rapid Fire Cannon, Sho Shojin is actually really good on him because his ulti is pretty good. His ulti hits multiple targets. So he'll ulti, shoot an arrow, and it'll hit multiple targets. So if you can get that off fast, uh, it's very helpful for beginning of the fight and mid fight, late fight. I mean, anytime during the fight, it's pretty good Pretty good to have his ulti go off. So Shojin's pretty good on him. Hextech Gunblade's not too bad because he'll get, he'll get health back from his arrow as well as auto attacks. And then Bloodthirster is also good on him to keep him alive as well. And then you can make him a Glacial because Ash is a Glacial and they're both Rangers. Okay, so we have Lucian. Lucian is a ranged DPS. So with Lucian, you want to build the same things as any of the other ranged DPSs. I'm going to say this a lot. So Ginzu's Rageblade, Bloodthirster, uh, Rapid Fire Cannon. Shojin's pretty good on him because he'll be just like dashing around and he does like two shots and one of them is magic damage. So it's like, it's just really, it's, it makes him like uncatchable kind of. And then Phantom Dancer is pretty good. On him as well and then you can go and also build a blade of the rune king because fiora is a blade master and he is also a noble next up we have blitzcrank blitzcrank is a tank bruiser i like to build blitzcrank a little bit differently because he's a little bit unique and he's not 
He's not the greatest unit, but he's a little fun to play. So uh, Zephyr's always good if you need that magic resist or remove, remove a unit from the board, especially because you're moving two units, kind of, because of how Blitzcrank works. He's pulling a unit to him and he's punching them so they get removed from the board for a little bit while he's also removing another unit. So it's kind of like removing two for one. And then War Mogs is pretty good on him. And um, Zeke's because he, he'll probably uh, he'll just uh, he'll probably be around multiple units. Uh, I I like to place him. I, I either place him in the middle or the back. I sometimes place him in the front as well. But uh, he'll he'll always he'll always be around his team his team. So Zeke's is not too bad on him. Uh, there are a bunch of, bunch of other things like you can build a locket. You can build a locket on him if you wanted to, but. Um, I like Zeke's on him just because of the uh, the damage from the BF sword and then the giant spells giving him a little bit more stability. I'm gonna say stability. I don't even know if that <laughs> is a word, but I'll say it. And then we have Hush and Swordbreaker. Uh, kind of unique, uh, but I think it's pretty cool on Blitzcrank because Blitzcrank is probably going to pull the um, hyper carry of the other team. Unless they're really smart, or I mean, not really smart, but unless they're smart about it and they move their unit. But if you're going to be pulling one of the hyper carriers of the other team, then you'll be able to like disarm them, silence them while you take them out of the game. And it's, I think it's pretty nice to have that on them, on Blitzcrank. And then you can make him a glacial because he's a brawler, and uh, Bolly Bear is a brawler as well. Next up we have Lulu. Lulu is a mage and you're going to want to build things like Ludin's Echo, Morella's because when she ulties, she'll ulti knock up, um, she'll knock up a unit, she'll, she'll like ex make one of your units, protect one of your units, give them health back while knocking up units and then doing, it'll do damage to the units around whoever gets knocked up. So it's not too bad. Uh, you'll get, you'll get the burning damage and you'll get splash damage. So it's pretty good. And then Seraphs is really good because you want her to ulti as fast as possible. You can actually kind of make Lulu a hyper carry just because of how how strong her ulti is. And then so you can kind of put like Shoujins and Seraphs on her and just have her ulti, ulti, ulti and keep your units alive forever. Phantom Dancer is also good on her. Um, and then you can also build a, uh, you can make her a demon uh, just because Morgana is a demon as well. Next up we have Pike. Pike is a melee DPS. Pike's ulti allows him to go through multiple units, stunning them and doing damage. So a good thing for him is he's doing he's doing like kind of like Ari. So giving him things like Ludin's Echo, Morello's is really good. And then you want him to ulti as fast as possible. So things like Seraphs and uh, Shojin is really good. And then Phantom Dancer is also good on him. And then you can make him a demon because uh, Evelyn is a demon as well. Aatrox. Aatrox is a melee DPS. So with Aatrox, he's going to have a pretty much the same thing as all the other DPS units. Um, Bloodthirster, Titanic Hydra, Static Shiv, Shojin, and Phantom Dancer, etc, etc. Same items. And then Shojin is actually chosen for him because of his cleave. Uh, I feel that Aatrox is not very strong by himself, but his cleave, his ulti is actually really, really strong. So if you can get him to cleave multiple times in one round, it will be ideal for your team. So to give him a Shojin is actually pretty good. And then you can make him an assassin just by, um, just because Evelyn is an assassin and he's also a demon. Next up we have Gangplank. He's a melee DPS. So you're going to be wanting things of like every other DPS. You're going to want Ginsu's Rage Blade. Morello's is pretty good on him because he's going to set a bunch of bombs down and he's gonna, these bombs are gonna, once he explodes his bomb by getting his ulti, his mana, um, they'll be doing burning damage as well. Ludin's is really good because his bombs do AOE damage. So you, you get extra splash damage on that. That's, so it does extra damage. It's actually really good with him as well. And then because uh, Gangplank really is not useful unless he ulties because if he dies before he ulties and he has a bunch of barrels out and he doesn't ulti it's kind of not good so you want him to ulti as fast as possible after he gets those barrels out so Shojin is pretty good on him as well and then Phantom Dancer like everybody else Phantom Dancer is always a staple item 
for mostly everybody in the game. And then uh, you can make him an assassin as well because Pike is an assassin and he is also a pirate. So we, next we have Poppy. Poppy is a tank bruiser. Uh, you're going to build tanky items mostly on her. You can start off with like Phantom Dancer, you can go Dragon's Claw if you need the magic resist. Uh, Redemption is pretty good. I like it because uh, it just it's a pretty good item. Um, Poppy, I like how Poppy knocks people like he, she, she's she's usable as she'll knock somebody up so it's kind of like some cc um so to give her a little bit of mana is pretty good and then uh the giant's blood is not too bad and then the perk of the redemption like everybody around her gets healed um it's not it's it's not a bad item you can also go the route of any of the other tank bruiser items that i i've talked about but i do like redemption on her and then Frozen Heart, of course, and Thorn Mail. And then you can make her a Sorcerer just because there's two other Sorcerer Yordles. So if you need another Sorcerer, you can put it on her if you really want to. Not saying you should, but if you really wanted to, you could. Evelyn is next. She's a melee DPS. She's an assassin, so um, assassin-y type items. We're going Phantom Dancer. And we're going Shojin because you want her ulti to go off faster. Finnead, same reasoning, high critical strike um, damage. Sword of the Divine, not great, like I've said. It's if you want it, if you can make it, and you, it's the only thing, just go for it. Rabidon's on her is pretty good because she does like, uh, she swipes, so she hits multiple units, and I feel that uh, she's, she's be it's beneficial for her because she's going to be doing a lot of damage with her ulti, so. Um, you want her to have more damage on her ulti, as much damage on her ulti as possible, because um, that's where most of her damage is going to come from. And then you can make her Blade Master, uh, just because Aatrox is a Blade Master and they're both assass uh, they're both demons. Next up, we have Vagar. Vagar is a mage, so with Vagar, you're going to want to put things like uh, Ludens. Uh, Ludens on Vagar is not that great because he's single he's it's a single target spell that he shoots off um but if you want to uh it's not too bad on him and then hextech gunblade is not too bad on him because he'll probably be shooting off multiple ultis in one round um so he get a, he'll get back a bunch of health especially from his auto attacks and uh, especially from his ulti you want him to ulti as fast as possible because uh he'll 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 delete units that have lower star lower stars than him or uh, his ulti is just really strong anyway, so um, getting into ulti as much as possible because his object attacks are just terrible um, is I ideal. So you just want to get a Seros on him. Even a Shojin. A Shojin is also really good on him, but I just put Seros here. But you can also put a Shojin on him. Morello is pretty good to burn the person that is instead from getting hit by his ulti, which is not often, but it does happen. And then <laughs> Rabadon to get his ulti even stronger. And then you can make him a demon because Morgana is also a demon. And they're both sorcerers. Speaking about Morgana, Morgana is here and she's a mage. So with Morgana, she's going to be attaching herself to multiple units with her ulti. So giving her a Ludens is actually pretty nice because it will like splash damage from those attachments. And then uh, Locket is actually really strong on her. Multiple Lockets, it's even stronger because you want her to be alive to complete her ulti and do the maximum damage she can. So you, by keeping her alive and also making your team a, like extra tanky, it just makes uh, the staying power of her ulti, the staying power um, of your team just so much stronger and it makes it so that she'll ulti, her ulti is just that much stronger. So having Ludens, uh, having lockets on her um, because of the rod giving her more uh, magic damage and then the chain vest giving her more armor she's just going to be a lot stronger and in the center of your team because that's usually where you're going to place her you're going to place her in the center or you're going to place her in the front row and it's a pretty good item to have on her uh, to keep her alive and then Saros because you want her to ulti as fast as possible and then uh, Morella's is really good because you'll be burning anybody that she attaches to and then of course Rabidon's death cap and then uh, you can also make her a blade master I don't know why you would, but you could because Aatrox is a Blade Master and they're both demons. Next up we have Shivana. Shivana is a tank bruiser, so you want to put the same items as everybody else. 
Uh, I kind of like um, to go DPS with her recently, so this is not essentially the way you want to go. But you can go Phantom Dancer, you can go Titanic Hydra, uh, Bloodthirster. But here are two items that kind of go along with being her being a DPS because she's such a strong DPS when she turns into her dragon form. So giving her things like Ginsu's Rage Blade and Hextech Gunblade just makes her so much stronger, uh, especially because her dragon form, she just does so much damage. And even like giving her a rapid fire cannon just because she'll just sit in the back and just boom, boom, boom. Because she becomes a ranged unit after she turns into a dragon. So um, you can go either way with her pretty much. And then uh, you can also make her a demon just because uh, Swain is a demon and they're both shapeshifters. So Kennen, uh, Kennen is a mage and his ulti is really strong because he will put an ulti around him and do a uh, pretty much AoE damage and stun his targets after his, uh, at the end of his ulti. So uh, it's pretty good. And then giving him Ludens Echo is even, be it's even better because it's just gonna do splash damage while he's ulting. And then Locket is pretty good because you're probably gonna either have him in the, just like the same as Morgana, you're gonna have him in the middle or the front. So it's gonna hit, it's gonna be able to get multiple, uh, multiple units on your team, as well as protecting him while he ulties because his ulti goes away once he dies. So you don't want him to die too quickly. So you wanna have Locket on him. And then Seraphs is pretty good on him because you want him to ulti as fast as possible. Morello's is really good on him because He's an AoE, he's hitting multiple targets, he'll burn multiple targets. Rabadon's, of course, uh, just for the damage. And then Yomu's, Yomu's is really good. I I mean, just because all of the ninjas, uh, two of the ninjas are already assassins, and I like Kennen just getting into the backline and doing his ulti and just like annihilating the backline with his ulti. So making him an assassin instead of Shen might be a better idea, but. Both of them are pretty viable because they both have kind of uh, unique ulties. Next up we have Rengar. Rengar is a melee DPS, so any and he's an assassin, so any of the assassin items pretty much stand. I keep him about the same as Kha'Zix, so you'll be getting him Bloodthirster, Shoujin, Curse Blade, Sword of the Divine, Phantom Dancer. And then you can make him a, uh, a demon just because it's, Evelyn is a demon and they're both assassins. So next up we have Volibear. Volibear is a melee DPS, but he's kind of unique because his ulti allows him to do uh, like a light chain lightning effect whenever he does an auto attack. So I like to put on hit effects on him because that chain lightning actually does on hit effects. So things like Titanic Hydra, um, Red Buff, Static Shiv, Hush, all those are really good items on him. Rapid Fire Cannon is pretty cool on him because then he'll just be a little bit further back, a little bit out of range for other units while also doing all that crazy uh, splash damage. So all of, that, all of that crazy chain lightning. And then you can make him a knight because uh, Sejuani is a knight and they're both glacials. Next up we have Katarina. Katarina, Katarina is a melee DPS. Um, her ulti is when she, she'll spin and she'll do damage to multiple units around her. So the best thing to do with Katarina is to give her things like um, Kennen would have so like uh, Ludens, Morellos are really good on her. Uh, Hextech Gunblade just to keep it's just a really good item on her because it does its damage plus magic damage and then it, she'll get life back. Shoujins because she's kind of useless without her ulti so having her ulti as fast as possible Shoujins is really good on her. And then Rabadon's Death Cap so she, she'll just clean up the back line as fast as even faster and that's essential with her. And then you can make her a Blade Master because Draven is a Blade Master and they're both Imperials. Next up we have Ash. Ash is a ranged DPS as well. And so you're gonna have all the ranged DPS items. I like Shoujin on her because her ulti is really strong. She shoots an ice arrow and stun a target and it does damage. So if she can shoot off multiple of those arrows in one round, it'll be really good for your team just, uh, just to help her, that your team take out the enemy team um, by freezing and stopping a unit from attacking while also being able to do damage to them and stuff like that. So her ulti is really strong um, if you can get Shoujin on her. And then you can also make her a demon because Varus is a demon and they're both rangers. Next up we have Leona. Leona is a tank. Um, she's kind of like Braum. She doesn't really do much damage. Her ulti is pretty cool. So maybe even a Shoujin or a uh, 
Seraphs would be good on her, but I just went straight up tank. So it's like a Zephyr, uh, War Mogs, Thorn Mail, Frozen Heart, Phantom Dancer, all good items. And then you can make her a knight because Kale and Garen are knights and you can just add a knight to your team. Next up we have Akali. Akali is a melee DPS, but she, her, where she shines is her ulti. Her ulti, she'll do, she'll throw daggers down, kunais down in a kind of like a fan formation. So she hit multiple units and does a lot of damage. So doing splash damage on that would be really good. So Luden, Morellos for burning. Just because she does damage both in auto attacks and on on her ulti, Hextech Gunblade's really good. Shoujin's really good because you want her ulti as fast as possible and her she doesn't require a lot of mana. She like literally ult, can ulti a thousand times around. It's really strong. And then uh, Ravnon Seth Cap, really good on her because then she can ulti, her ulti is going to be even stronger. And then uh, I put Sorcerer here. I don't know why I put Sorcerer here. I think uh, putting her on a Sorcerer team is really strong, but uh, it doesn't fit into what else uh, I've been saying this whole time with everybody else. So you can make her a demon or you can make her like a Swordmaster uh, because ninjas are, uh, Shen's a Swordmaster on uh, ninjas. And then uh, demon because Evelyn is a demon on assassins. But uh, sorcerer, she's just really good as a sorcerer. She's like really good. Next up is Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath is a tank bruiser. And then uh, so you're gonna go want to go any of the tank bruiser items. So like I said with Rek'Sai, you're probably not going to want to build items on Rek'Sai if you can build them on Cho'Gath. So Cho'Gath is gonna be your better frontline unit. And his ulti is just really, really strong. So having him stay alive and maybe even getting a second ulti off is really, really good. So things like Zephyr, Warmogs, Thornmail, Frozen Heart, Phantom Dancer. And I would even say things like um, Seraphs or Shojin would be pretty good because his ulti is just so strong. Um, and then a Yomu's just because... Um, Kha'Zix is also an assassin and you can put him on an assassin to have him jump to the back line and be like the tank in the back line. But yeah, it's, 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 I've done it before, so it's not that bad. Next up we have Kindred. Kindred is a ranged DPS, so same things as the other ranged DPS, but thing about Kindred is usually you're going to put Kindred in the center because her, I think it's a her. Anyways, I'm going to say her. Her ulti hits everything around her. Um, basically any of the allies around her when she ulties cannot die while the ulti is active. So uh, you usually place her in a position where she's surrounded by your allies. So Azix is pretty good on her so you can get that extra attack speed especially because she's a ranger. Um, so you'll be on a ranger team, a ranger wild team. You can even have a crazy amount of attack speed. Um, that's cra too crazy though that's not too good but um, Zeke's is pretty good on her, and then even maybe a Locket would be good on her. And then Fan Dancer, of course, and then you can make her a Glacial because Ash is a Glacial and you might be running a Glacial team. So next up we have Brand. Brand is a Mage. So Brand is going to be very similar to things to any of, other, uh, any of the other Mages. So he shoots an ulti and it bounces between multiple units and it does a lot of damage. So since it's hitting multiple units, I call it an AoE. It's not exactly hitting multiple units at the same time, but it's hitting multiple units. So Ludens is really good on him. Um, and then Morellas is really good on him. And then because his ulti is so strong and you want him to ult be alive, uh, Hextech Gunblade is pretty strong on him. And then um, Seraphs is really good because you want him to ulti as many times as possible. And then and you want him to ulti as fast as possible. And then Ravnos Death Cap is really good because you just just because his ulti does so much damage, just want to do more damage. And then, like I said, with a Kali, I'm not sure why I made him a sorcerer since no elemental is really in a, a sorcerer. Um, but he's also a demon, so you can make him a sorcerer actually. Uh, so yeah, so Morgana is a sorcerer, so you can also make him a sorcerer, and he will be just fine on a sorcerer team. Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul is a mage and he has an ulti, he shoots like a beam in front of him, does a ton of damage, so it hits multiple units, so things like 
Luden's Echo, Morello's good on him. Hextech Gunblade for survivability and just damage. Seraph's good on him because you want him to ult you as many times as possible and as fast as possible. And then Rabadon's Death Cap, of course. And then you can make him a demon because Morgana is also a demon. Gnar. Gnar is a tank bruiser. And with Gnar, you're going to go, uh, want to go things that will keep him alive. You're going to be running him on like a shapeshifter team and Shivana is a shapeshifter. So, so it's pretty good to have him to have Dragon's Claw because Shivana is going to be on a team usually with an Aurelian Soul. So they have the Dragon buff which means they'll be immune to magic damage, so you want him to also maybe have that ability too. So giving a Dragon's Claw is pretty nice, so he'll be like jumping in and pushing people away and they, the other team can't really hurt him with their ultis. And then Zeke is pretty good on him. Uh, it's not the best because you usually put him in the front line, you won't put him in the middle, so he won't be hitting at maximum amount of units. But because he's wild, um, it's pretty good on him because uh, wild gives attack speed and He's a wild, so Zeke's is not too bad, just like everybody else, every other wild I gave Zeke's to. And then Thornmail is good on him, because um, he'll just be inside the enemy team, especially after he ultis. So he'll be taking a lot of damage. So uh, Thornmail to knock that damage back to them. And then Frozen Heart's really good, because he's going to be in the center of the enemy team. And then um, Phantom Dancer, of course. And then you can also make him a demon because uh, Elise is a demon and they're both shapeshifters. Next up, we have Sejuani. Sejuani is a tank bruiser. Uh, I like to build Dragon Claw on Sejuani because I don't want her to die too quick. Her ulti is so strong. It's probably one of the strongest in the game. So having that ulti go off, you're going to uh, probably win the round. So survivability is key with her. Shojin's key because if you want to get her ulti off, as, you want to get her ulti off as, as fast as possible uh, before your team is like taking lo having losses. And then um, Thornmail is pretty good on her if you have a, if the other enemy teams have a lot of physical damage. Um, Frozen Heart's also good if that's the case, and then it also gives her mana. And then Phantom Dancer, of, it's just everybody should have a Phantom Dancer if you could. And then you can make her a demon. Uh, there isn't really anything she can <laughs> make uh, that actually fits her origins and classes. So if you really think about it, she's a she's already a knight, and none of the knights can really give away. Uh, it can be made with an, any of the other knights' classes or origins cannot really be made with an item. So like Garen, um, Mordekaiser, and stuff like that. Imperials, they, none of them can be made. And then um, Glacials, you can't really make anything from the Glacials team into a um, into an item. So the only thing I could think of was if you're going Glacial Rangers, then you're probably going to have Varus. So you can make her a demon because Varus would be on the team. Next up we have Draven. Draven is a ranged DPS, probably the strongest ranged DPS in the game. And uh, you're going to want to build a bunch of strong items on him, uh, particularly uh, I would say Rapid Fire Cannon and Ginsu's Rage Blade. But Shojin's pretty good on him so that he can get his maximum stacks as fast as possible. Uh, Bloodthirster is really good on him because you just want to keep him alive so he just wipes out the enemy team. Because he's usually going to be the last one alive since he's in the back line. And he's, if he's by himself, he's going to be taking some damage. So Bloodthirster is pretty good because then he'll just like sit there and wipe out the enemy team. And then Phantom Dancer is pretty good on him for survivability's sake, especially against assassins. And then uh, you can make him an assassin as well, just because Katarina is an assassin. But he's also just, he's really good as an assassin, so you can make him an assassin and you don't have to worry about it. Karthus. Karthus is a mage and uh, he shoots, uh, he, he ultis the enemy team from where he's standing just like a beam of lightning comes down on them or beam of energy comes down on them uh, so it hits multiple units so obviously we want to go for the staple of Ludens, Morellos uh, but you also want him to ulti faster so Seraphs uh, if you feel that he needs more damage and is not living long enough uh, especially because you need him to complete his ulti things like um, 
even a locket would be good on him, but uh, I put here a Hextech Gunblade. And then you can also go and build um, Rabadons if his ult is just not strong enough for you, uh, which it's already really strong, but Rabadons will just make it even stronger. And then you can make him a demon because Morgana is a demon. Next up we have Yasuo. Yasuo is melee DPS, the strongest melee DPS in the game because he's a five cost. Um, so you want to go the usual route, but because he's by himself, because because he's in exile, you have to place him by himself with no one around him. I would build a little bit more survivability items on him, even though he does gain his own shield. So Bloodthirst is really good, Titanic Hydra is really good, Dragon uh, Claw is really good, especially if you're going against a uh, magic heavy team. Um, Shojin really good if you wanted to shoot his ulti off as many times as possible his little his tornado It does a lot of it does like AOE knock up and stuff like that. So that's pretty good on him Phantom Dancer like always just good and then um, uh, You can make him a demon because Aatrox is a demon and they're both sword or blade masters So next up we have a Nibia. Nibia is a mage uh, Her ulti hits an AOE area that she drops where she drops her ulti down um, they'll be doing damage in that area, so things like Ludens and Morels is also it's good on her. You want her to ulti as fast as possible, like everybody else that does type, that type of has that type of ulti. So Seraphs, and then um, Hextech Gunblade for the same reasons as before, and Ravnon's Death Cap to top it off because just give her as much damage as possible, and she will clean up a team. And you can make her a sorcerer because you'll probably put her on a sorcerer team. Um, if you want to stick to the glacial elemental route, uh, you can make her a demon or a knight, but it's not really, I mean, those aren't really good. Making her a sorcerer is really good. So uh, I just put that in there. But yeah, if you want to stick to the theme of the this video, sticking to origins and classes, you can make her a knight because of the glacials, because of Sejuani, or you can make her a demon because of Brand. Next up, we have Kale. Kale is a ranged DPS. So you can also specify Kale to be a tank bruiser, but I like to call her a ranged DPS. Uh, her ulti is really strong, especially if you, once you like level her up, she can shield a target and keep it from taking damage. And then also if you shield a target, uh, also if she gets a two star, she shields two targets. So having things like Shojin on her is really strong. I would even say, go as far to say um, Seraphs is good on her. Rapid Fire Cannon, I love Rapid Fire Cannon on her just because she'll sit in the back line. She does pretty good damage and um, she'll be safe while protecting the rest of your team. Ginsu's Rage Blade is pretty good on her. I like, I like her as a DPS. Uh, Bloodthirster is pretty good. If she's not shielding herself, keeping herself alive with Bloodthirster is nice. Uh, Phantom Dancer is also just always good and then you can make her a blade master um, because Fiora is a blade master and they're both nobles and it's not too bad on her being a blade master is not too bad on her. Next up we have Swain. Swain is a mage. So with Swain uh, you want to keep him alive as long as possible. His ulti is just absolutely devastating to the other team but if he doesn't ulti it's just it's just a waste of a unit. So you want to keep him alive as long as possible, especially until he ultis. Because once he ultis, you'll probably keep himself alive because he drains life from the other team. But uh, one, before he ultis, you just want to keep him alive. So Dragon's Claw, if the other team has a lot of magic damage. War Mogs, uh, just give him health. Uh, if you need to give him some armor, then Thorn Mail. Frozen Heart's really good because he's going to be in there once he's starting to drain life from people. And it's just a good tanky item and it'll keep him alive. And uh, Phantom Dancer, like everybody else, same reasoning, it's just a really good item. And then uh, you can make him a knight. Not saying you should make him a knight, okay? These are not, you should make them this, but because of his origins and his classes, uh, you can make him a knight if you wanted to because of Imperials and there's Darius and Darius is a knight, so. You can also make him a blade master, but I thought knight just so that you can keep him alive a little bit longer, you know? Anyways, I think that's it. Uh, so thanks guys for watching. Stay positive and I will update this video, I think next week, just because of the new patch. So I'm going to come out with a shorter video, just uh, 
talking about the updates that happened over the week. So thanks guys for watching. Stay positive. I will catch you in the next one.